Don't you notice how Rivulet comes second to last in the procession of slug cats, and thus gets to deal with the consequences of everyone's actions. And that is nearly everything that we know about our girl Ruffles. She wasn't sent by anyone, as far as we can tell, and she doesn't have anywhere in particular to go. There are no mysterious overseers guiding her path or offering her advice. You wake up in the sewers with a killer hangover. You've got just a few moments to eat some food and drag yourself into the nearest hole to pass out again. Waking up once more will reveal that this stifling deadline is a recurring problem. At this point, Pebbles is shuffling as much water through his system as possible in order to procrastinate the consequences of his actions. This is the primary, and perhaps only, penalty that Rivulet's campaign imposes on her ridiculous power budget. In just a handful of seconds, you need to secure enough food to sleep through another cycle and locate your next shelter. This is a unique, challenging, and interesting penalty. Rivulet's agility is a good solution to this problem, but it still forces you to plan your route and carefully slip past predators in the minimum amount of time. It incentivizes you to be efficient, and it places weight on your decision making. In other words, Rivulet's agility and the length of the day are in balance. As you exit Drainage System, the starting area, you gain more time because the rain comes more slowly in Shaded Citadel. Once you get to Pebbles, the cycles pause for a moment, and this is where things change. <laughs> Pebbles tells you to take him off life support. Five Pebbles tells you to take his batteries, and when you do, the cycles return to normal! Why? Pebbles probably isn't using the water anymore, he doesn't have the energy. Lore things! Ask somebody smarter than me! The problem is that Rivulet's power budget feels like it was balanced entirely against this reduced time frame. Imagine if the scavengers just stopped showing up a quarter of the way through Artificer's campaign. Now our crack addict daughter not only gets a full day to do whatever she wants, but she can turn off gravity because she's in possession of Pebble's batteries! You say jump, she says, what's my curfew? Ruffles' ability to parkour is simply ludicrous. This is not okay. Her mobility was already cracked before we gave the drug addict the funny gravity button. What this amounts to is there is no problem that Rivulet cannot outrun, outmaneuver, or outright avoid. Every character has a wide range of options when meeting a challenge, and they generally are as follows. Stab it, avoid it, befriend it, sneak past it, and parkour. Most characters meet challenges that make one of these options preferable to the others, either due to the character or the current challenge. When he's hungry, Spearmaster prefers to stab big predators rather than avoiding them, because that's how he gains nutrients. You can usually swim past monster kelp, but Gourmand prefers simply Thanos snapping it with a single spear over trying to swim past it. Daddy Long Legs generally forces players to choose stealth over any other option. With Rivulet, I had to switch up the way that I approached a challenge approximately three times in the entirety of the campaign. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really- In Shaded Citadel, I had to trade for a lantern to be able to utilize my agility properly. I paid scavengers at the toll, 
I probably could have schmooved past them, but I had a pearl on me, so there wasn't really a point. And finally, in the rot, I had to sneak past Mommy Longlegs, but- <laughs> In the rot, I had to sneak past Mommy Longlegs, because the lack of gravity makes it difficult for Rivulet to leverage her agility. For every other challenge, Rivulet's answer is parkour. Rivulet can schmoove past every creature and obstacle in her way. It's the only thing she's particularly good at, but she's so good at it that it doesn't matter. Acquiring the rarefaction cell doubles down on this phenomenon. Because you need both hands to carry it, it denies you the ability to hold a spear or utility item while enabling some truly psychotic parkour options. You can still tote one extra item around in your stomach, but you won't have easy access to it. What this means is that in Rivulet's campaign, there's little need to change up your strategy. In fact, because you need to carry the battery around to clear the campaign, you're incentivized not to. Where each of the other characters pay the price for the powers that they wield, Rivulet loses absolutely nothing for being the fastest being this side of the speed of light. With this godlike speed, you're a hop, skip, and a short swim away from delivering the battery to Big Sis Moon, and the campaign is over. With all that said, let me tell you this. Rivulet's campaign should have been boring. It should have been monotonous. What is a story without struggle? What is a story without conflict? What? is a story where the protagonist overcomes every challenge with the same technique. And up next, a cylinder. Hmm. The circle. I think that goes in the circle. The square hole. Now, we've also got the semicircle right here. Do you see a slot that would fit the, the semicircle? Semicircle? The, sem the semicircle. That's right. It's the square hole. And maybe I have twisted morals or maybe I have skewed values, but oh boy. <laughs> I loved every moment of it. I loved every single moment of it. Even eight hours later, my brain still gets the same dopamine release from hitting my head on the ceiling after doing a backflip. Every other character has a set of tools to solve the variety of problems they're faced with. Gourmand obliterates nearly everything with a single throw, turns himself into a kinetic weapon, and can generate or craft nearly any item in the game. Artificer makes explosives, does parkour using explosives, and is an explosive. Ruffles just breaks ankles. That's it. That's all she does. That's all she needs to do to clear her campaign. Beyond that, it's all that she needs to do to be fun to play. I have a lot of experience with a wide variety of video games, and a universal truth I've discovered in my countless hours of research is this. Mobility is dopamine. Something about it just key smashes all the buttons in my tiny lizard brain and floods my synapses and reward chemicals. Rivulet's power budget was mismanaged. Her campaign is out of balance. There's no doubt about it. Each of the other campaigns make conflicts between the player and the environment inevitable. Every other character forces the player to develop mastery of a complex decision-making process unique to them. Rivulet's campaign defies both of these expectations. It's devoid of the friction and frustration that permeate every other campaign. Rain World is a game that walks a razor-thin line between being charmingly unforgiving and emotionally abusive. No, God, please, no, no, no! Where other campaigns invoke emotional deities like disorientation, discovery, and destruction, Rivulet's campaign is a love letter to the primal feelings of wind in your hair and the weightless moment before gravity sends you earthbound. Ruffles' obscene mobility is contextualized by the abrasive nature of the rest of the game. Without this contrast, Rivulet's campaign could not be what it is a breath of fresh air, a catalyst for catharsis.